beautiful and welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video where I am going to do a full face, I have it here, a full face of new makeup that I bought since I came to the US because, listen, just because I haven't been filming doesn't mean I haven't been diving into new releases and <laughs> I just want to use a bunch of it. I have foundation, concealer, powder, eyeshadow, lip, brow, all of it. There's a fly here. <laughs> I did not escape the flies, I actually went to a place that probably has more bugs than Sweden, so good job on that. But yeah, this is going to be a full face of things that I have bought since I came to the US. I am aiming to buy a little less this year than I did last year, which is going to be that hard because I was really enjoying the new releases last year, but I'm not on like a low buy or restricted buy. I'm here to review stuff to let you know what is good or not. And if you haven't been here before, this is your first video here. Hello, my name is Angie. I'm such a lover of beauty makeup. I love trying most of the things so that I can let you know which ones to get, which ones to skip, and which ones to put on a wish list for later. So if you want to see some more beauty-related content, don't forget to subscribe because I upload, well, <laughs> quite a lot of, quite a lot of videos. Okay, so we are just gonna dive in. I think I'm gonna zoom in so we can get like a really close-up view of my face. Listen, you can't see anything from over here. My cat is like, what are you doing, sweetie? Meow. I don't know what's going on, but I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna fetch the cat and uh, let's start. Wow, <laughs> I'm rusty. Now I see what the cat is doing. She caught one of the bugs and now she's eating it. Good thing, bad thing? Unsure. Here we are, up close and personal. I wanna use the new Charlotte Tilbury. Beautiful skin, Charlotte's beautiful skin. Really, did she put her name in the title of the product? Okay. Charlotte's Beautiful Skin Foundation for your best healthy looking skin day every day. Skin looks more radiant up to 285. That's an oddly specific, oddly specific number. Oh, we can't open it on this side. I bought it in shade number six neutral, which was supposedly because I have the number six in the sheer coverage foundation as well. I don't remember the name of it and they recommended to get the same in this one. So that's what I'm doing. Am I gonna use, I'm using a new sponge from Colourpop. I don't know about this shape. Am I gonna use this one? It's so flat. I did not try out this shade either. So let's see how this is. I mean, this is just the first impression. If you have ever been on my channel before, you know that I always come back and I give you a better review after I've used the product a bit more. So I always come back and I follow up my first impressions. So don't be too alarmed that this is like a first impression and I'm always going to come back and give you my final thoughts on the products that I'm trying. Um, it looks beautiful. I feel like I was really good at like finding my right color. I did one squirt and now I'm... Okay, this was not... These are not even squirts. Okay, <clears throat> does that count as one? I don't know. But I did one and now I'm going to do one more. I think this is meant to be a medium coverage foundation. Should I have looked this up? Should I have looked this up? Ingredients, French, medium coverage, light as air foundation infused with hydrating hyaluronic acid and brightening rose. Yadri, yadri, yadri. Minimizes the appearance of pores, reduces the appearance of pigmentation and skin appears instantly brighter. Okay. So it's basically a medium coverage foundation that's just meant to make your skin look like a better version of itself. And I will say my skin right now looks like I have just put on my nighttime skin care routine, but I also happen to have absolutely clear and amazing skin. So what are you doing back there, sweetie? Hi, doggo. You want some foundation too? Ignore the dog, if you can. I think you saw him in the background. He's out here, enjoying the new beauty room too. But yeah, first impression, looks beautiful. I need to see if it dries down a little bit though, because I can't stand foundations that are too glowy or too dewy that doesn't set down, because I am turning 38 in like 
days. Should I be celebrating? I probably should. You should always celebrate getting older. The goal is to get older. You are succeeding at life. I should probably get a cake. But my point is that if it's too dewy and it doesn't set down, it will move and slide around my face and it will settle in fine lines. I need something that has a natural or radiant or glowy like finish, but dries down. And there are things like that out there. I just need to figure out if this one is that too. Most of these things I bought at Sephora, but this thing I actually bought. I bought at my local, is it called Heb or HIB? Let me know, is it Heb or HIB? It's like a grocery store that I think is like Texas only. Am I, am I making this up? I could be making this up. Long story short, I love, I love the store. It has amazing selection, but let me tell you, groceries in the US is way more expensive than groceries in Sweden. And I know everyone, like, I don't know who, who started this propaganda that Sweden is so expensive. I'm, I'm here to tell you there are a few things that are less expensive in the US. Like everything is more expensive in the US except gas for your car, makeup, and alcohol. Everything else you're paying more for here in the US. So don't believe the propaganda. Even with like with taxes and stuff. Because in Sweden, all the prices in stores are including taxes. And in like the US, it's never including taxes. At least not in most stores. Okay, so this is the Maybelline. Did I tell you or did I just start? Maybelline 30 hours concealer. It's called like Superstay Active Wear 30 hours concealer. I got it in the shade 15. I think that this is a good shade, honestly. And... I don't like the consistency is extremely thin, which is something that I like. I don't think I'm going to conceal anywhere else, but here, let me use this ColourPop sponge. I'm almost afraid to try new concealers now after that Jacqueline concealer. I'm like scarred. That is beautiful. Wait, does this remind me of the NYX Born to Glow concealer? So far it does. I'm gonna report back to you, but this blended like a dream, medium coverage, very thin. Are we finding a new favorite? I'm gonna let you know. Don't, don't take my word for it yet. Let me try this out a bit more, but first impression, very impressed. I did not like this 30 hour wear foundation. It was very cakey. So I was a little bit worried about the concealer, but this looks, this looks beautiful. I'm so excited. Okay, so I have done a little brows because I want to use the Patrick Ta Brow Lamination. Wait, 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 wait. Made your brow lamination gel. Uh, I bought this one because I've been wanting to try this one for so long and it never came to Europe. Like it has a little comb, like a little Barbie brush. It looks really beautiful, but I think I need to set my face a little bit first. So it feels... Not sticky, but slightly moist. I said what I said. So I'm going to set my face because I bought this new UA powder. I know I talked about this and I said that I wanted to try it. And this is the Soft Focus Hydrate and Set Powder. This is the, lumin the illuminating powder. and it, it came in this little pouch. I don't think that's something that I'm going to be using, but just so you know came in a pouch. So I think I'm going to be using this powder. How does that look? Is it like visibly shimmery? Yeah, that is definitely visibly shimmery. But maybe, maybe that's not a bad thing. So I'm not going to be, I never use really shimmery finishing powders in this area or under my eyes, because I think that just illuminates what I, what I don't need to be have illuminated but I will use it on the rest of my face and I will use some other powder like just in this area Ooh, and I need to change my batteries I'm gonna do that and then we can try that brow lamination thing I've heard really good things about that one um now I'm using it here anyways why am I so stupid don't answer that but I've heard really good things about that brown lamination thing, and I am excited to try it. I will say the combo of these two together makes my skin look really nice. So we are going to use this one, and I totally forgot that I had a cream bronzer that I wanted to use. Hopefully it will work. I didn't really set with a lot of powder down here, only up here, so <laughs> I am a mess. But yeah, we're going to use this one. 
I don't have any gel in my... I kind of like how long the wand is. It's making me feel very fancy. Are you supposed to only brush it up? Should I have looked at, like, instructions? Apply to clean, dry brows or after using major brow shaping, like blah, 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 blah. Brush gel through brows, being sure to fully coat each hair until product becomes tacky, then press brows into place. Okay, okay, we will do that. Oh wait, I should not have, ah, I should not, I should have looked at this before. Okay, it's definitely becoming a little bit tacky. We're supposed to press it in place. Oh wow, that actually looks so nice. Wait, why is this so pretty? Okay. Wow. <laughs> I'm like in shock. That is so good. What? Well, am I finding a bunch of really good products here today? Wow. Let's actually start with lipstick because I was finally able to buy this Sephora brand. This is called the Lip Stories Lipsticks. This is hot in Havana. It is orange. I've been wanting to buy this for so long, but this color was not available uh, in Europe. I love an orange lip. Nothing brightens my day like an orange lip that is so pretty okay let me put this on and we can do bronzer okay i absolutely love this it's so fun <laughs> i love orange lips yes what are you doing honey okay i love this so much i think it's so pretty so we are gonna do the rare beauty stick oh, apparently i got some on the side i don't know about this packaging i mean you can see it gets smudged on the inside is this packaging really the best packaging out there? I'm not, I'm not convinced. I got mine in the shade Power Boost. Is that the shade? If that is not the shade, just check the description box because I will have the correct shade. I don't like when you can't twist things all the way down because you end up with messes like this. That is just my personal opinion. So we are just going to put, I'll put some, oh, this is a great shade for me. I'll put some on the side here. And I will use a brush that I really like for cream brushes because it's like synthetic. It's actually from BH Cosmetics. I hope they make it through. Uh, and it's really nice for just dispersing without moving the foundation. Wow. That color is the perfect color for me. I mean, this is probably going to work better if you don't powder like a dumbass like I did. <laughs> do what I say, not what I do. But yeah, that looks so pretty. I feel like this is a color that would work on me even if I don't have a tan. Because I do have a little bit of a tan right now. Okay, I'm a big fan. And I also think that if I want it to be even darker... I mean, look at how nice that looks. But if I want it to be even darker, I could like just set it with some powder. But I'm not going to set it with powder today. Because I want to see how it looks. And how it wears without that. I'm not going to do a check-in with a wear test or anything. But I am going to be wearing this throughout the entire day. So I will put a pinned comment down below. If there's anything that is worth noting about the wear wearability of these products. But that looks stunning. So I'm just having a good makeup day. I know something is going to disappoint me soon. You know this isn't meant to last and I jinxed this totally. This is the new Natasha Denona Rose Cheek Duo. It is a blush and a highlighter and you're thinking orange and pink? You, <laughs> you are correct. We're doing orange and pink. I think this seems to be, I haven't even swatched this, but just like based on how this looks, this has some shimmer particles in it, but it looks almost like a cream is it a cream is this one picking it up at all not really yeah i needed i needed something that was a little bit firmer to pick this up it almost seems a little bit creamy okay 
Do I love this blush formula? I'm not sure. Is this a cream? Yeah, this is a cream. Right? Okay. No brush. Fingers. Fingers were the best. Okay, that is a really beautiful, like, neutrally coral pink. I do feel, though, that we've had a lot of these blushes and blush duos and stuff like that with, like, corally pink. I kind of wish that she would branch out. Do something different. But I like that there is some shimmer in it. It looks... Okay, it looks... Okay, I'm not going to be mad. It looks really beautiful. But definitely, Finger was my best friend. <laughs> Don't demonetize me. Don't demonetize me. I like that it's, like buildable as well so you don't accidentally go in with too much because you could definitely build it up okay i'm just trying to clean this brush off a little bit so we can use it on the highlighter should i've read up about what these formulas were cream blush and super glow highlighting powder okay super glow have i tried the super glow i don't think i have so we're gonna put that up here okay that's that's really Okay, she was not kidding with the super glow. Okay. I don't see any visible, like, shimmer or glitter particles. I think there are more, like, visible shimmer particles in the blush formula than it is in the highlighter formula. I'm just gonna put a little bit of what's left up here, even though I have very glowy skin and I kind of don't need that. But here we are. So I have two products left to try. It is the Hindash Liner and it is the Nasha Nona Mini Diva Palette. It is a pretty... It is a nude palette. It is a nude palette and has four mattes and one shimmer. And I'm all about that life. So I think I'm going to do an all matte look because... I mean, shimmers are all nice, but I don't... If these new shades or existing shades... I will pop up a little text here explaining if these are new or existing. I really should have checked up on that before, but... Apparently, I'm not as structured as I used to be, but let me put some eye primer on and we can do a little easy nude look. And I'm going to show you how I do that like cat liner that's like the pointy in a corner that lifts the eye. I'm going to show you that with this liner that I've heard nothing but good things about. I don't mind a pink and an orange lip, but I think I'm going to stay... I can't believe I'm saying this. I think I'm going to go with the brown. Don't come for me. I'm having an orange lip, okay? I'm... <laughs> I don't know if anyone's expecting any kind of brightness with the B the Biba palette, but not not today. But I am going to show you how I do that eyeliner. So I'm just going to quickly go through and try these shadows and let you know if I think that these are normal Natasha Denona quality shadows or not. I will say, had this not been Natasha Denona, I would have never picked up this little thingamajingy. Oh, here. I just really, really like the Natasha Denona quality. I really like the packagings. Uh, I like how they usually go together and that they, like most releases at least from her, make sense. Did you see that new Valent... Sir? Did you see that new Valentine's release from her? That looks really pretty as well. I like that she's not afraid to do like more colorful and editorial like color stories and that's something I like. I also love how her mattes build on each other so that you're able to get some depth with even just one shade. So yeah, had this not been Natasha Denona, I would have not picked this little palette up. But I'm just, I don't know. I'm a stan, stan of the brand and I like... I actually like more than I did in the beginning to be like brand loyal. So that's why we are picking this one up. But just gonna apply something easy and we'll do the liner afterwards. I'm gonna use some of this, like there is a cream to powder in here, this one here. And I'm gonna use that one under my eyes because it's gonna make, uh, it's gonna stick a lot easier to powder. Like these cream to powders are so versatile. So they're gonna be perfect. On my lower lash line. I'm just gonna keep it simple with some of this here. Yeah, I think that's gonna be perfect. And I'll use some of this lighter one to just diffuse the edges. And now with a smaller brush, I'm gonna pick this like really dark color. You can see it here. And I'm gonna pick that one. This is a Sigma Detail Diffused Crease E33. It is small, but it's not the absolute smallest. So it's not like that super, super detailed, but it's still detailed enough to be able to diffuse and put this just in the outer corner, like you can see here, 
in the outer corner and in the outer part of the lid. I think I'm just gonna put some of the powder, the Jouer powder on the lid, because I don't wanna have the shimmer and I don't wanna have the peach, just to have something on the lid so that we can do the eyeliner afterwards. So like I said, I'm just using a little bit of this Jouer powder and I am gonna put that on just a flat brush just loading it up on my brush. If you don't have a light shade that you want to use as a lid color or an inner corner color, remember you always have your setting powder, your powder foundation, your highlighter, even your blush could be nice. Like sometimes things can be used for other things than what they are marketed for. So if you are noticing that your palette is missing something, I always go on and on about like, oh, I'm missing and in the corner highlight where I'm missing something deep or blah, 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 blah. But remember, you can always mix and match with things you already have. So this worked out pretty good. It is a finishing powder with a little bit of a sheen to it. Worked out perfectly as a lid color and an in the corner highlight. I think I'm going to turn the, the autofocus on and we're going to see. I don't know. I don't know if the microphone is picking that up or not. I haven't been filming that long with a microphone. This is the Hint Dash Liner. I bought this one off Beautylish. I've been wanting to try this one for a really long time and it did come to Cult Beauty in Europe, but it came a little bit later, so I didn't want to order it because I knew I was moving. But I'm gonna do that liner that goes from the inner corner and out. So I always start like doing my wing out first. I line the outer part of my lid. I do small strokes and then I do a line out like that and I try and like lift this one really up. Normally I wouldn't do it this up but since I'm gonna do the inner part a bit down I'm really doing a big wing and I'm bringing it up. So bring it up more than you usually would. It's gonna look nice with this part here. So now I have something like this. It is a really big line and it's looking a little bit ridiculous, but we are gonna put liner on now the inner part of the lid and I'm gonna start, this is, this is when I need to get a little bit closer. Let me see if I can move the mirror a little bit. I hope you can see. I'm gonna do a little flick in here. So I'm tracing the inner part of the, uh, the eye. Let me actually finesse this part. So now that I'm here, I need to do a little bend here, a little hook. I'm doing very small strokes with this one. so that I can have the little hook. I don't trace my entire lower lash line with this one. I will go in instead uh, with this one. This is the Nabla Bombay Black Liner. It is just a black pen liner and I am gonna put that in my waterline and it is gonna be a lot easier to like maneuver than the, the liquid liner. So now we have a liner that goes from in here, up here, remember, it's really hard sometimes to get it to be a super like flowy thing because you have like folds and lines and stuff like that. So don't be too hard on yourself if it's not turning out to be like absolutely like straight and perfect. But I still think that this is like good enough. I love how this is looking. I think it's really, really pretty. I am gonna connect the line to the lower lash line here as well. I'm gonna put on some mascara. I don't Think. Oh, I do have a new mascara that I could try actually the rare beauty one Let me fix this liner and I can try that new rare beauty mascara because like it's not new, but it's new to me I got it from my friend Maggie. Uh, I wasn't able to try it in Sweden But I brought it here. So actually let me get that one out and we can try it and don't be too worried if it's not perfect This isn't perfect either. I'm just having fun doing my makeup trying new techniques trying new trends It is not that deep. Can you hear my cat in the background? I think she's lost. Okay, so this is the mascara here. So far, everything has been bought by me in this is in this video, but this Rare Beauty mascara was sent as PR to my friend, but she gave it to me. So let's try it out. I like the brush. Maybe it's a little bit bigger than I am used to. That's what she said. 
I always find it hard to be precise with my lower lashes when the brush is this big. But it does give my lower lashes quite the volume and quite the color. Okay, that's nice. I have heard my friend um, Samantha Marsh really loving this mascara. Like, this is her favorite mascara. Now let's do the top lashes. I mean, I am going to use some uh, false lashes. I think that that is appropriate with something that is as dramatic as this eyeliner. But let's see how the mascara does. I mean, it's not going to be that easy to see when the eyeliner is so dramatic. But I like the brush a lot for my top lashes. I mean, is it giving anything? I don't feel like it's doing as much for my lashes as some of my favorite mascaras like the Benefit Balgal Bang or the More Mascara by We Makeup, but it's definitely doing something. I like a lengthening mascara the most and I'm not 100% sure that this is that. Okay, so I have two layers of the mascara on. Can you see? This is like the comparison and I think it did a pretty good job at like lifting the lashes and giving them some volume and separation but i will say i still prefer my other favorite mascaras maybe i would like this even more if i like bent the lashes and didn't have such a dramatic eyeliner don't hate it but i don't think it's going to be my absolute favorite but it's definitely a really nice mascara so i am going to put on some of these falsies and then whoo, we can talk about the last thing that i bought from sephora which is the new perfume from kayali i know it's a very odd and random last item but I still want to chat about it. Okay, so here we are. Here is the finished look. I really like how it's like it's so dramatic and so spicy. I really love it. I feel very sexy in an eye like this. And you can like it, do it as dramatic as this. Or you can do it less dramatic. You can just do the little flick in here with a little bit of eyeshadow and skip the whole like thick liner here if you don't want to. I also wanted to open this. This is the Kayali Eden Juicy Apple 01. This is the new perfume from Kayali. It came out like a month or so ago. And I, who, I bought this from Sephora. I did a Sephora order. Most of these things were bought in the same order, except of course the things are not available at Sephora. So this is the one with the red one. I bought the small one. Remember when you buy something from Kayali and you haven't tried it in store and you're not 100% sure that's going to be your favorite perfume, you can always buy these small bottles. They have, I think they have, have approximately the same amount of um this is 10 milliliters i think that's the same amount as like a rollerball or like a mini bottle it is definitely not a sample size like this is a bigger bottle and it's the same size and it has a sprayer just like the big bottle it's just that it's smaller so that you can try out the fragrance without like buying the big bottle because Kayali Perfumes, which is owned by Huda Beauty, and I think one of her sisters, it's a pretty expensive brand. This is a juicy apple kind of a scent. I, if you've been on my channel before, you know that perfumes is my thing. I love perfumes. I don't chat that much about perfumes on my channel because it's not the kind of content that brings in that much views, but I want to keep mentioning it a little bit more like here and there because I do love perfumes. I love fruity scents that are not too sweet and that are... I'd like them to be borderline unisex. Like, I love the Hermes, or the rhubarb, which is sold as a unisex perfume, and it has the sense of rhubarb. It is amazing. If you see it in store, sniff it. I will put up a picture of, like, how it looks right here so you know what to look for. This one is a apple perfume, and it smells a little bit more sweet, but it's not, it's not floral, which is what I like. I don't like floral perfumes, at least not normally. It is like a, it smells like a juicy, fresh, like red apple. It smells like a red apple just when you cut through it. But there's also some spices and some warmth in the background because this one does have some warmth in the background. And it is very fruity, very like fresh, but it's not... It's not very masculine. This is definitely more on the feminine side. And you know I hate when like perfumes are being labeled as like masculine or feminine or for men or for women but this is just a way of me for describing it i think you can wear whatever perfume you like i love wearing perfumes that are marketed to being like for men and i think that men can wear perfumes or anyone can wear anything to be honest if it's marketed towards women or men unisex it doesn't matter wear what you like you are becoming the perfume the scent is for you whatever it's marketed to be 
towards, to be honest. But it is a little bit more on the sweeter side. It is not as, as like, it's not as unisex as the Hermes uh, the Rhubarb. This is a lot more sweeter than that, but I really like it. It doesn't really have that floral undertone, which I prefer. If they're going to be fruity, I like them to be fruity. I don't like them to be floral, but I really like it. I think this is a good purchase. Please do sniff it out in store if you're uh, worried, but if you like fruity scents, if you like fruity scents, you will like this because this is definitely a fruity scent. Let me just put it like that. I hope you enjoyed the look. I hope you enjoyed the little demo on this uh, eyeliner. I will say this is a full face of hits. I like each and every product that I tried today. I think all of it looks beautiful. The liner was beautiful. The foundation and the cheek products are looking absolutely stunning. The uh, gel is still looking beautiful. Lip color is everything I wanted it to be. The Natasha Denona shadows and the cheek products perform like her products normally do, which is really good. I like the Jouer powder as well. It is really shiny and I think you can see it around my face. So if you like a glowy face, but you like working with powders, I think you would enjoy this powder. I hope it comes out in more shades. I will say so far, I think my favorite product, which is funny because it's from the drugstore, is the concealer. So far it's wearing beautifully. I don't think that it has like really creased or sell into my lines really that much. I mean, everything's gonna sell a little bit. I do have lines. I'm gonna report back to you on this one, but let me tell you, if you like the NYX Born to Glow concealer, I think you're gonna enjoy this because so far they're fairly similar. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you again. I don't know when, but real soon for a new video. Bye.